This is the first of its kind full-scale exercise. In the past, the exercises have been done strictly in a room, talking about scenarios. And what makes this unique is we're actually here on the ground attempting to deploy those scenarios. Everyone has a role to play in preventing and stopping invasive species. And this exercise is just another example where that's true. This is one of the most important things that we can do to try and prevent an outbreak of zebra aquaga mussels in the state of Washington. We need partners to make it happen. We can't do it alone. Our objectives for the day, we are going to test our capabilities for assessing the presence and distribution of all life stages of zebra and quagga mussels. How we are gonna... This is one of the most important things that we can do to try and prevent an outbreak of zebra quagga mussels in the state of Washington. If we have a detection on these things and we do not have a response fast and a containment to try and take the one shot to eradicate them, it's over with. They, they will be in the water body, the state will be contaminated with them, and, and we then live with, with all the devastation that they could do. Zebra quagga mussels are the number one threat in the state in freshwater systems for aquatic invasive species protection, control, rabbit response. If these zebra quagga mussels come in, it changes the ecosystem completely. So you don't have the same kind of species that you would have. For us in the Pacific Northwest, salmon is an icon. We have different kinds of salmonids up here. We have trouts, we have other uh, species that we want to protect. Those are things that we have to put into consideration. Some of those don't have a dollar figure, but if you want the dollar figures, we have the dollar figures, hundreds of millions of dollars. It would be a game changer if they ever found their way in here. And that's why prevention is so important. And the second of that is a very uh, rapid unified response, which is what we're drilling today. The high risk for our facilities is the hydroelectric capacity, the water delivery and the ability to generate power. If a quagga mussel or a zebra mussel infestation were to get into our reservoirs, it could jeopardize uh, the ability to generate power and to deliver water, clogging up intake pipes and increasing the overall operations and maintenance costs to be able to uh, keep that flow going. There's 31 routes into the state of Washington, and right now we are covering two of the major routes coming in. It sure would be great to expand to I-5, to a couple of these other ones where we could anticipate probably doubling the number of inspections too. We dealt with 18 boats this year with zebra mussels on them through those two check stations. We're asking them to clean their boats every time they come out, drain them, and dry them. So it's just clean, drain, dry. And if they do that each time they change a water body, if they're obviously they're putting in and out right here, that's not a factor, but if they're gonna move the boat somewhere else or if they're coming from somewhere else, they need to clean it, they need to drain it, and they need to dry it. And if everybody are really careful about that, not just the boats, but anything, even like a tackle box, anything that's been in the water, if they're really careful about that, we can keep this from spreading. And if you see something, say something. So if you're boating, if you're canoeing, if you're out on a hike, uh, if you're walking the dog in the evening, if you see something you've never noticed before, or if you see a large number of things that really stands out, take a photo and report it to the Washington Invasive Species Council. It may be nothing, and that's great. That's exactly what we want to tell you. But it may be the first introduction of an invasive species and something that would trigger a rapid response. And that's what we're here practicing today. This is the very first interagency response to invasive mussels focused on the operations. So across the West and in Washington State, we've had numerous tabletop exercises where we play war games and discuss between agencies about how we would respond. We had sampling operations that consisted of water-based surveys with eDNA, um, larval um, toes, villager toes, and ponar grabs of the bottom, so substrate. 
We then also tested our dive survey capabilities. So we had a dive team in the water actually testing to see if they could find them. We, we didn't put muscles in the water, obviously, but we actually had some, some uh, thumbtacks that simulated and they did a grid pattern to test how their surveys went. We then also did shoreline surveys with canines. Alberta, Canada, they brought their dog down and then we had Puddles, our dog. Uh, we did shoreline surveys to test that. Oh. Then we also tested our containment capabilities of pathways. And that was if you do have a, a water body that's infested, obviously boats are going in and out of it. How do we minimize that risk? So we set up an inspection station to inspect boats, not only entering the water, but coming out, inspect them for the presence of zebra aquaga mussels. Then we also set up a decontamination station so we could simulate and if we had a boat that came out that had mussels on it, it would go through the decontamination station where we would hot wash it, clean it, render it so it would not be a threat to any other water bodies. Then finally, we simulated an actual treatment. We put a containment boom with a flow curtain into the water, secured it, and we simulated a treatment using rhodamine dye a biodegradable, non-toxic dye to test if we could actually take that one shot and do a treatment to try and eradicate mussels. So we, we had a lot of moving parts on this and uh, it went off very well. There's a lot of little details that go into these uh, types of situations and that's what we're exercising is, did we get it right? Did we have all the staff we needed? Did we have all the equipment that we need? Uh, everything from, you know, having tape to fix something to the right uh, piece of equipment to do the uh, plankton toes or the ponar grab samples and things like that. Did you find it? Yes, you did! Each individual part by itself is fairly simple, but when you put them all going simultaneously at once, it becomes exponentially harder. So being able to practice the capabilities uh, is invaluable. Uh, Again, law enforcement, I'll, I'll put it on this way. As a law enforcement officer, the first time that you go to arrest somebody and pull out your handcuffs, that's not the first time that you want to actually have tried those handcuffs out. You, you have to train. Whenever you get next to the water on the dock. It's a very important piece to have the jurisdictional leads as well as any the interested parties to participate in this. This is where we can really wrap ourselves around an axle quickly is if we don't have the right people here to talk about and work these operational situations out. If you don't engage the right people off the bat, then when it actually happens, you're not going to know uh, who to talk to. We know that this will hurt everyone across the board, everybody in Washington and every socioeconomic status um, from your energy bills to your food production and so we have to come together now to make sure that this is a high priority that we can attack when we have a, a muscle in the area and we can quickly respond and so having this right now and having all our agencies come together as one is not only effective government but it's affecting serving as legislators. This is the culmination of nine months worth of work in planning and really kind of sketching out what it means to do the field work. And when you do field work, just as simple as, you know, how are you going to attach uh, a containment system to the bottom if it's windy? You know, things like this, you really don't anticipate those questions unless you actually practice it and do it. And if we're thinking about as a state response to invasive muscles, we're going to have one shot to get it right. And if we don't practice these techniques and we assume that we're gonna be effective, that's just not likely to occur. So if we train, if we drill, if we practice these things on a regular basis, when we really deploy, we'll have the best chance uh, possible to stop them. Washington State is very dependent on our waterways from your power to your food to your uh, recreation. I mean, we do everything through water in Washington State and to make this a number one priority and make sure that we protect that and that we protect it no matter what you believe and who you are, social economic or your political stance, we have to protect the Washington State's natural habitat. It's very important. We went out and it wasn't just theory. We put it to, to practical use this time. So we've, we've learned a lot of things, uh, things that we didn't anticipate, and that will allow us to go back to the drawing board 
and hone our skills and hopefully we'll be able to do another one, two, three, keep this in our repertoire. Um, hopefully we don't have to use it, but if we do, then, then we're prepared for it. <laughs>